Sandy died trying to do the right thing. She died because the American system failed her. A system we believed in. A system that needs fixing now. Everybody in America under our Constitution is entitled to due process of law. Uh, there it is. And we've fallen short in the due process of law arena when it comes to the whole immigration system. This land is your land. This land is my land. My sister was a legal permanent resident and lived here for nearly 33 years. In 2005, Sandy visited Barbados to show off her granddaughter. She was the child's sole custodian. When she returned to this country, Sandy was detained for an old misdemeanor drug charge for which she hadn't even served any jail time. We told the ICE officer of my sister's medical condition she had high blood pressure and high cholesterol. She had a bleeding fry boy. Despite all this, ICE determined that she needed to be detained. Congress passed laws in 1996 to greatly restrict the discretionary authority of U.S. immigration judges. As a result of the amendments to the law, people whose lives in the United States were fundamentally productive and positive were not given an opportunity to remain here. In my judgment, that's not much of a due process investment in the system. Before the 1996 law, more residents would have been able to have their cases come before the courts for the judge to use their discretion in determining how serious is this crime? How long ago did that crime occur? All of those factors are what the judges balance when they're exercising discretion. And the 1996 law has limited that discretion we need to have immigration reform that includes meaningful and expanded judicial discretion. Sandy was taken to Port Monkey Regional Jail in Virginia. I know she complained constantly about not getting her medicine. My sister did everything she could to get help, but no one would do anything. Then I received a call saying my sister had died. There needs to be some transparency some oversight, and ultimately some accountability. The detention system is sort of the gulag of the American uh, judicial system, and it needs to be reformed so that it can be fair and understood and efficient. We wish to have legally enforceable standards because when you bring people into custody, you assume certain obligations. That has not happened. And we've had some very serious situations where people have even died, and shamefully so. So if we're not going to adhere to the basic standards that are in the Constitution, everybody is at risk. When I came here asking for protection because I was very scared, many of my classmates disappeared. They were killed. I never thought that in America I should be handcuffed from the airport. I should be shackled for overnight, sitting on the bench, strip searched, put into the windowless warehouse, converted to detention. Coming back from America, I couldn't expect that from America. This large category of people that are going to be subject to detention, whether or not their risk to, to flee or a risk to the community add up to a system that doesn't honor due process and that needs to be reformed. So what you really need to do is you really need to change the laws and make it an individual determination. Then you have to very significantly expand alternatives to detention. And then you have to really focus on the way that people are treated in detention centers. Even the Department of Homeland Security has acknowledged the rampant abuses in the detention system, but their proposals for reform simply don't go far enough. We need legally enforceable standards so that we can hold the government accountable for upholding basic human rights. 
in the detention hall, they lock people out. And the way they got treat you, they hailing on you, they screaming on you, you have no dignity. You, you are, humanity have been given away. People's life were in danger there. Some people found out that it would be better to be killed in their home country than to be treated like that in this country. And that is the contrary of the idea of liberty, of the freedom. If you look at what our immigration policies have been over the past few years, they certainly have violated those very values that, that we respect and are proud of as Americans. Y yo veo a un policía parado enfrente de mí y vi que habían más aquí dentro. Pero en ningún momento ellos dijeron, eh, nosotros somos de inmigración. Entonces él me dice a mí que dónde están las personas ilegales. Yo le respondo a él, no, aquí solo está mi hijo, mi esposo y yo. Yo soy residente. En el post 9-11 What's clear is that even while the government seeks to uphold the nation's immigration laws, that they're breaking the laws in doing so. They're using racial profiling. They're storming into houses and homes. They're linking immigration enforcement with local law enforcement officials to make our communities less safe. What really needs to happen is a complete reform of our immigration laws. Uh, and to the extent that uh, enforcement needs to take place, it needs to be smarter. And we need to make sure that due process, that our very bedrock ideals that we hold dear in America are respected. Entonces, cuando él estaba haciéndome las preguntas a mí para acá, cuando en eso oye los pasos y que alguien se le, como que se levanta y sale corriendo. Entonces, él viene, agarra acá, Se sube la, se saca la pistola, se da la vuelta y hace así. Y mi hijo salió de la puerta. Fue a una distancia cortísima. Imagínese que ni Dios lo quiera, se le va un tiro. Mi hijo desde Lloraba. ese día se sienta, él se sentaba de noche, pateaba y decía, ahí vienen, ahí vienen, me están apuntando. Es algo bien horrible. If we deny fairness and justice, under our laws against any group of people, that ultimately we all become victims of that injustice. The only way that we can protect our own rights and our own values is to make sure that we protect the rights for others. <laughs>